Another day, another battle in the Lake Conference. We have another edition of High School Girls Basketball at the Lindbergh Center, home of Hopkins High School. Tonight, the Royals look to make it 53 straight wins as they host the Eden Prairie Eagles. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike Beaton. Neil Olstab will join me in the broadcast booth following the Open. Hopkins, 20-0. They went 32-0 last year and have passed just about every test that has come their way. Last time we were here, the Royals emerged victorious in an 88-80 victory over St. Michael Albertville against Eden Prairie in the first meeting. The Royals won that one 77-59. Their combination of speed, talent, and ability to run the floor has overwhelmed most opponents. Paige Becker's seven double-doubles, six of the point assist variety, one in points steals. You also have Maya Naji and Taylor Woodson who are making considerable leaps from a year ago. Maya Naji in particular, 10.7 points per game last year, 18.6 points per game this year. Maya Naji, an incredible scoring stretch. In seven of her last eight games, she has scored 20 or more, and the one-two punch of Paige Beckers and Maya Naji have helped Hopkins work their way through all sorts of adversity, including that tough battle with Wyzetta and St. Michael Alberville in the first round of late conference play. Eden Prairie, you don't know what to expect out of them. They can beat anybody, they can lose to anybody. Consistency has eluded them, but they have a lot of talent and a lot of youth building their way up. As a result, the Eagles, the record may not show up, but they have a lot of potency in the years to come. And that includes folks like Neka Obiizer, who's going to Youngstown State. Natalie Mazurek, she had a big game in Eden Prairie's overtime win over Edina on Friday. Destiny Bursch, the floor general, came over from Chaska, averaging over 10 points per game. And Nia Holloway with two double-doubles against two defending state champions, De La Salle and Hopkins. If Eden Prairie can string that together, they will be a force for the rest of this season and in years to come. But the Eagles, much like Hopkins, schedule tough. They've played just about every ranked team you can imagine in Class 4A. They hope it will prepare them in the Section 2 playoffs. But Eden Prairie, they like to run it. And with folks like Holloway and Bursch, they can do just that. As always, if you're going to be Hopkins, the key is unforced errors. If Eden Prairie can limit those, we could have an upset on our hands, but no matter what, a great showcase is on tap. Stick around. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. She's in trouble, finds James, toss shot, it goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh, I don't know, it put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the Lindenberg Center. I'm Mike Peden and we're joined to have Neil Olstad. Yes, I meant to say we're honored to have Neil Olstad. Yes. And this is why I'm not on ESPN. <laughs> Neil Olstad, the man behind the Lynx Dynasty podcast and Candace Hoopis. I know you wanted to come out here to see Paige Beckers. And before the game, before we got into the pregame rituals, they honored Paige with her jersey that she will wear at the McDonald's All-American game in Houston on April 1st. Pretty impressive, All-American right here in Hopkins, Minnesota. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be watching for her here the rest of the season. And then yeah, in that game uh, in Houston, uh, April 1st. She's not the first Hopkins player to get that honor. Nia Coffey all those years ago also took part in that game back in 2013. But every time I cover a Hopkins game, it seems like Paige has another accolade. USA Basketball Female Athlete of the Year. The first high school female to be featured on Slam Magazine and now the latest Minnesotan to get an invite to the McDonald's All-American game. With Paige Beckers, she's gotten a lot already, but for her, the future is just beginning. Pretty incredible stuff, and you know, as we, a lot, you know, won the state you know, title undefeated last year. They're trying to go for that again here this year already. So far, so good, I guess, <laughs> in that route. 20-0. Yeah. We'll go over the starters quickly. 
for Eden Prairie. Little change in their starting five. It's Mira Morjani, number two, Destiny Birch, number three, Molly Lenz, number 15, Natalie Mazurk, number 23, and Nia Holloway, number 41. Hopkins, Paige Beckers, number one in the lineup. Amaya Battle back from a stress fracture. Number five, Taylor Woodson, number 20. KK Adams, 22, and Maya Naji, 34. If Hopkins goes undefeated, Slam is doing a series of features on this team. There is a chance that they will be cleared to play nationals. You may know this, the high school league does not allow teams to travel beyond the Midwest, but... There are exceptions. There may be an <laughs> exception. So if Hopkins can go undefeated, that's the prospect they would get. I know they've gotten a lot of praise. Some asked if this was the best team ever. Last year's team was pretty good, and of course, with six state tournament titles under Brian Cosgriff, there are a lot of Hopkins teams that would qualify for the conversation. But, Neil, I'm glad you and I get to go along for this ride that we're about to see. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Uh, you know, I'm getting, it's going to be a learning experience, but I'm excited to see some uh, high-quality basketball here tonight in Hopkins. And we're tipped. Hopkins wins the tip. They're wearing their black alternates. They've been sporting those throughout most of the season. Beckers inside to Najee. Maya doubled up. Passes out to Taylor Woodson. Woodson and Beckers among the many Hopkins standouts who started as eighth graders. Wow. What Naji. a journey it's been. <laughs> it's not uncommon. <laughs> And you may have seen the ESPN article as Paige Beckers fires the mid-range J, can't get the bounce. Of Paige's first breakout game, if you will, as an eighth grader, where Brian Cosgrove said she won the game for us, knocked down seven threes. <laughs> and seven the rest threes, is I think we'll see that here tonight. Seven threes from Beckers. Doesn't shoot a lot of three-pointers. Okay. That's a five-second call in Destiny Bursch. Doesn't really need to, though, with the way Hopkins runs the floor and with the all-around game Paige Beckers has. Inside, outside, she's got that Kobe Bryant step back move. I remember mentioning that in an earlier game back in December, of course, long before we, we become aware of the tragedy involving Kobe Bryant and all of those people in the helicopter crash. But a lot of these kids looked up to Kobe. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see a few of them change their numbers to 2, 8, or 24. Interesting. Yeah, I could see that being the case. I mean, obviously, you know, the young people all around, all over the world, really, you know, with the influence of Kobe Bryant, you know, you see all those numbers happening, whether to change away from those numbers or to wear them and honor them. It's, it's, uh, it's very cool. Well, with the amount of energy he invested in women's basketball with his daughter, yes. Gianna, and the college game, you may recall, he gave a shout-out to Rachel Banham, was a good friend of Sabrina Ionescu. A lot of these girls looked up to him. Yeah, and even though obviously you know the tragic passing, but hopefully you know still that that even that spark that you know he kind of you know hopefully lit in, in all these people's hearts and you know from promoting the women's women's game and stuff like that. Even though we lost them too soon, you know hopefully that you know memory will continue on and you know women's game women's game will get a boost from it regardless. It certainly will, and Paige Becker's giving a huge boost to the women's game. There's Amaya Battle with the steal. Missed several games with the stress fracture. 11 games she had to take off. Maya Naji can't get the layup to fall. Woodson, that's a traveling call, but that's one you can live with. She was getting after the rebound, Offensive just lost rebound her balance. There, yeah. yeah, I'm right off the bat already very impressed with the, the pressure from Hopkins defense here. I mean, obviously the full court pressure you're seeing here, but yeah, I haven't seen enough Hopkins to know if that's kind of their calling card or whatever. But, it is. Uh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Speaking of calling cards. <laughs> yeah, the fly-by block there from Beckers. <laughs> wow. Speaking of calling cards, yes. But for Hopkins, they are one of the few teams who executes that trap, mm. that full-court press from the inbound. Most teams wait until you Half court, get three-quarter right. court, yeah. Hopkins, they want to pressure <laughs> you from the start, and that is one reason why they have not lost since 2018. 
In fact, the last time they lost, I believe In God's Favor by Drake was the number one song back in March of 2018. <laughs> right, you have to know those things. You have to know sort of, well, yeah, what was on TV, what was at the box office. That's, well, it's only two years ago, streak. but yeah. it is. <laughs> this seems still a long time. Uh, right, in 2018, for example, Black Panther was the top grossing okay. film. Now, 2020, you know, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Paige Beckers pulls up, no good. Maya Naji, rebound, and will shoot two. You know, even though the score is still 0 0 here, you know, Hopkins already getting a number of like very close looks, you know, one foot in the paint type of looks, that kind of thing. So looks like they're kind of getting what they want. Shots are just kind of rimming out at this point. But yeah, Hopkins looks to you know be getting some some good looks, at least uh, here to start the game. Mayanaji averaging 18.6 points, 8.1 rebounds per game. Solid free throw shooter. And Hopkins, they were clutch at the line in their win over St. Michael Aberville that I was on hand for back in January. Splits at the line. But that's another way they can beat you. Nia Holloway with the block on Amaya Battle. Sophomore on freshman there. Holloway, the long skip to Natalie Mazurek. Morjani out to Holloway. Nia comes from an athletic family. Her mother ran track, her father played basketball, and Mazurek gets the putback. Mazurek. Two double-doubles, five games with 20 points or more. Woodson. Nice move to the hole. Great step through right there. A little pump fake step through move. Nice composure. You know what I say about the pump fake, right? Well, actually, no, you, you haven't been with me before. <laughs> you got to tell me now. Well, as Scott Van Pelt would say, it only works every single time. <laughs> Nia Holloway in transition. I was going to say Nia Holloway uh, incorporated both genes from her family with track and basketball. She competes in both. That's a traveling call on KK Adams. Another senior for the Royals. KK, the three-point sharpshooter. Played an integral role in Hopkins' state championship last season. Knocked down four triples, I believe. And that allowed Hopkins to pull away from Stillwater after a rough first half. Whoa! That was Destiny Bursch. At first I'm going, what is she doing? She had an open lane, but baited her defender, and Paige Becker says, right back at you. I think Could she took offense. Could have been and one right there, yeah. A little contact there. I, I, I did see the contact. I think she took offense to that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It says, I'll show you Amara Marjorni. Wow. For Johnny Sports. Nice strong take there, driving baseline, and yeah, just finishes through the contact, just kind of tosses it up, and she goes to the line to See if she can get uh, an extra point here. Mira Morjani averaging 7.1 points, two and a half rebounds per game. She completes a three point play and Eden Prairie off to a fast start here. Najee finds Taylor Woodson who drains the jumper. As you know, Neil, if you double somebody, one of your teammates Someone's is going to be open, right. <laughs> they found her that time, and she just squared it up and let it fly. Fourteen oh eight left in the first half. Molly Lenz to Bursch. Got some separation on Woodson there. Lenz fires the three. Off the heel, rebound, Holloway for the putback. Nia had 12 points and 10 rebounds in the first meeting against Hopkins. And her mother told me Nia gets excited, brings it up a notch when she plays against top level competition. Paige Beckers for three, bullseye. Oh wow, it's great ball movement there. I mean the double came when the ball got entered into the post and they swung it around with perfection. All the way around the horn, found Beckers for the three. And there's another example wow. of the Hopkins pressure. Yeah. First was able to get it off of Adams. But if you want to beat Hopkins, you have to contain that press and no unforced errors. Missouri, long two. No good. Paige Beckers with the rebound. Paige Beckers with seven double doubles, but none for points and rebounds. Six were for points assists. One was for points and steals. Maybe tonight's the night. Let's get 10 rebounds. 
Hey, <laughs> there's triple one. doubles not out of loop. Hey, she doesn't have that yet. Yeah. <laughs> Paige Beckers, faith and basketball, two parts of her identity that resonate strongly with her. Does a post game prayer after every game. Also good friends with Azzy Fudd and is trying really, really hard, if you read that ESPN story, of getting Azzy Fudd to join her at Connecticut next season. A little recruitment right there. Number one player in the country. All right. Well, Fudd looked at her for the first time during USA Junior National Competition and thought, I could take this kid on. And <laughs> then Paige scored on seven straight <laughs> possessions. Eden Prairie scores down low. Bursch finding Missouri. And it's 13 to 11. Eden Prairie hanging with Hopkins so far. Najee, the kick out to Nunu Agar, 24. Page for three. Swish! Wow, I mean, the shot is pure. Beautiful shot there from Beckers. And, you know, Eden Prairie setting up in that 2 3 zone. And, you know, when you see that, you know, what you got to do? You got to move the ball around, get the ball in the middle, and then let it fly from outside. And, hey, if, if Paige is going to have those open shots all night, it might be a long one for the Eagles. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting to sort of see the, the, the play against the zone already here tonight. As the saying goes, that's one way to get out of a zone. And Paige and K.K. Adams have the long-distance trajectory to do it. Great defense there from Paige. Oh. Missouri is feeling it. Missouri up to six. She had eight points in the first meeting, four, seven from the floor. Paige thought about oh, it. Oh, the find there. Yes. She had the shot. She could have taken that shot. Instead, she keeps her head up and finds a teammate there for the layup. Really, really nice to you know, Traded in a good shot for a great one there. <laughs> you got to love those kinds of trades. Yeah. <laughs> but that is what makes Paige so lethal. Most players, if they get into a funk, they would get rattled, or Johnny can't complete the layup. But Paige, if her shot isn't going in, she'll play facilitator. Ten assists or more in six games this season, 9.1 per game. You don't see those numbers often at the high school level. Burst missed the layup. Page. There's the Kobe Bryant move. It doesn't go in. And another traveling call. Hopkins looks a little flustered here. Not quite as poised as they were the last time I saw them with St. Michael Albertville. That being said, Hopkins, they're closers. They tend to pull away in the second half. That's where you've got to meet them head on. Eden Prairie breaks the press. This is Molly Lenz. Lost it. Mayanaji will shoot two. Again, very impressed by the playmaking of Beckers there. I mean, there's two, two plays in a row where, you know, they've just got a defensive rebound and Paige just being proactive, keeping her head up in transition and her teammates are running the lanes. She's found them two times in a row here for kind of an over-the-top lob pass. Maya Naji, the younger sister of Zeke who plays at Arizona. Zeke, part of the state championship boys team for Hopkins last year. Hopkins, as you know, synonymous with basketball excellency. A lot of big names have come through the Lindbergh Center. I've been impressed with uh, Najee's, you know, sort of poise in the paint. You know, she's been getting the ball a lot and getting double teams in that zone and stuff, but she's usually making the right pass or dribbling out in the right way. So I've been impressed with her play in the post. They kind of run a lot through her. Paige jokingly claims credit for Najee's development. Said she was skinny and weak uh, when she first <laughs> suited up for the Royals, but Maya's Paige anything but. Yes. <laughs> well, this Hopkins team, what impresses me the most is not the wins or the accolades, but with all the coverage they're getting through Slam and ESPN, as Paige is left all alone for three. Well, that's dangerous. Yes. Oh, in the dish. To Maya Najee. The three assists already there for Paige? Oh. At least. But to finish up that point, they would have every reason to get caught up in the Hollywood atmosphere that has come their way this season. And Hopkins, they just motor ride it along. 
they don't have an ego about them. Well, that's impressive. But again, as you kind of speak to, you know, it's sort of, you know, this place is known for, you know, having great basketball teams. So, you know, yeah, a little extra media coverage, but they're not flustered. They know what it is to be on top. Najee kicks out. And Elena Contreras. Again, just a great example of Najee's patience and her ability to know what the right pass is. Her teammate was open after getting double teamed. She found her. She hit the three. I wouldn't be surprised if Maya Najee becomes one of the faces of Hopkins next year. I've had coaches tell me they're going to look a lot different. Well, of course, when Paige is your all-time leading scorer, leads it the school and career steals and assists are going to look different, but the way Maya has carried herself in the post and kind of plays that stretch four. Again, great free throw shooter, like you said, a lot of patience, doesn't get rattled easily. This Hopkins team, they're gonna be around for a while. The program is in good hands. Well, they've been in good hands for the last 25 years with <laughs> yeah. Brian Cosgrove at the helm. Six state titles, two missed basketballs, likely a third in Page. A fortuitous bounce there, but Agara cashes in. Timeout, Eden Prairie. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than it is to be good. That's what Daryl Waltrip would say. But the two other missed basketball winners to come out of Hopkins, Leslie Knight back in 2004 and Nia Holly, both played Division I. Knight at Minnesota, Holly at Michigan State. Nia Coffey didn't get missed basketball, but got just about everything else. She was able to parlay that into a pro career. And I would be here all night trying to remember all the other Division I talent that has come through Hopkins. The list is long. <laughs> We're seeing at least five or six on the floor tonight. But this is what Hopkins does to a lot of teams. They had a couple of runaway wins in conference play. Edina and Buffalo and Hopkins the highest scoring team in the state. They've had that mark for the last two years, 85.7 per game. That's a lot. There are some colleges who would kill for that. <laughs> Heck, I think they would even outscore some WNBA teams. Paige Beckers, the steal and the run out. And Paige up to 11. Another steal. <laughs> Page is turning this into a clinic. Doesn't cash in that time, but Eden Prairie just not able to answer that Hopkins pressure. Page with a dime, Agara with a triple. Another assist for Beckers, it's probably four. And just like that, Hopkins up by 13, and they are doing this in a hurry. And Page almost got another steal. Page almost sails into a snare drum there. Gotta be careful. Pep band out there taking a break. The way she's playing, there might be someone in the XFL who'd want to take Paige, <laughs> add her to the roster. I thought you were gonna say she's gonna grab a trumpet and start playing. She probably could. <laughs> I've heard she is a wicked Mario Kart player. Okay. She and Azzy Fudd have a rivalry on who the better one is. <laughs> that being said, Mario Kart is one game I'm confident enough where I could take either of them on. Oh, you're here, I, here first from Mike Keaton. Yes. Paige, if you're watching this. Bring it. I'll, yes, I'll take you on <laughs> in Mario Kart. When it comes to basketball, uh, you would embarrass me. <laughs> Natalie Missouri gets Eden Prairie a much needed bucket. She's up to eight. Eden Prairie really able to cash in on the offensive glass here so far in this first half. Four or five offensive rebounds. So that's really the main way they've been able to score is getting those second chances. And Eden Prairie, they've got the height. Missouri at 6-4 to match Maya Najee, who's not on the floor right now. Woodson. Used up the dribble, kicks it out to K.K. Adams. K.K. still looking for a place to play college ball. Page, step through, no good. Page and K.K. also AAU teammates. And the AAU lineup they got to play alongside with included Mia Curtis of Minnehaha Academy, who is the Red Hawks all-time leading scorer. Well, Paige is not going to be perfect all the time on the passing game. <laughs> that one's kicked. A little kicking violation there. 
But again, the main takeaway is Page exits the game here to take a break. You know, just the vision and the, and the her willingness to look up the court for her teammates to really see some stuff that's really developing early on. It's very vision really has been the most impressive thing here. It's my first time seeing Paige Beckers. You don't see Paige go to the bench often. Eden Prairie with the steal. This could be a key opportunity with Paige on the bench. Holloway staying with it, and she'll shoot two. Mia Holloway, a couple of fun facts about her. If she doesn't have anything going on, she will sleep past noon. She said her personal record is 15 hours. That's just the wow. way she's wired. So right. in case anyone's wondering, it's just the way her body's wired. She also avoids carbonated beverages, and it stems from a joke her mother played on her when she was five years old. Her mother, Nolana, I've gotten to know her, told Nia, if you drink pop or carbonated beverages, it will stunt your growth because Nia wanted to be a tall basketball player. So for the last 11 years, Nia has avoided any carbonated beverage. Wow. That is something for a high schooler to sort of say they've never had, like, pop or soda. Like, that's... All I because like of what her mother said. There you go. Sometimes Nia, you just got to scare them straight. <laughs> well, Nia, a strong-willed character. So sure. Nolana told me if you tell her something or if she doesn't like it, you're not going to convince her otherwise. And there's another dime for Beckers. Becker's taking the seat for about 25 seconds. We'll taking one play, take a seat, and now she's back. That's Nia Holloway trips up, oh. but 25 seconds is about how long Maya Moore got off for Lynx games, doesn't it sound like? <laughs> wow, and again, the Hopkins zone, just swarming, and, and or, uh, sorry, the press. And yeah, you got, you got players, you've seen multiple plays here where hop, that Hopkins zone, you got players willing to dive on the floor and really go for the ball. You saw that there, that extra hustle is kind of what gets it done when you're, when you're pressing. Agara for three, short that time. Holloway with the rebound. Six fifty to go in the first half. Hopkins leads 32-20. Holloway in trouble, finds Miley Lenz, and Obi Iser checking in. Holloway elbow J swish. Nia Holloway. Yeah. Holloway. At the start of the season, as Amaya Battle pulls up and says right back at you. Ellen Weesey, the head coach of Eden Prairie, said Nia Holloway, one of those athletes poised to have a breakout year. Eden Prairie on the press. That is the danger you run. That being said, Hopkins, it usually pays off for them, so they'll take those chances. And Savannah Jones scoring for the Eagles. Thirty-four, twenty-four. Page, no look, dish to Najee. Oh, that was a great pass there. That would have gone on the highlight reel had Maya finished. But Hopkins, if it doesn't work out, they go right back at it. There's Nia Holloway, offensive foul. Neil, I think you and I need to catch our breath. The way these two teams play, the pace of this game. It's been up and down. It's been uh, it's been a high intensity game. Uh, I'm tired just watching these young ladies <laughs> run up and down the floor here, man. All the press that you get stuff. And you've to seen be the young. links for how many years? Yeah, really. You yeah, would think you'd be accustomed to this. Years, yeah, they, they have some high intensity defense. But yeah, you don't you, like you said before. You don't see the press, the full court press. <laughs> That's something else. Beckers. Look for Najee on the Probably back Probably should have just no shot look. it there. You're right. Sometimes you can be a little too <laughs> yes. unselfish. But again, Page, Jalen Suggs, some of those top players, if they make a mistake, next play. They don't get bothered one bit. We mentioned Kobe Bryant earlier. Even he had a few air balls. Folks brought up his first playoff series. Four air balls against Utah in 97. Paige Becker steps into a 16-footer, gets the bounce. And on the woman's side, I can say I was there for the only time in her career where Maya Moore failed to score. It My happened goodness. in a rookie season. Wow. Against One San Antonio. Time only. One time only. She did not score against San Antonio. The Lynx ended up winning that game. That's when Taj McWilliams Franklin hit the game winner. Wow. Must have been sick that day or something like that. So, something he was, was just wrong. off. You know, sometimes the rim is sealed shut, as you uh, can attest to with your basketball experience. Uh. And with this timeout, since you do cover the pro game, I wanted to get your take on the crazy free agency that has happened in the WNBA. A lot of big names 
changing teams, and this league, it's going to look a whole lot different for 2020. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fun to see. It's uh, something that you know the WNBA has been lacking in the past. A lot of player movement, you know, that kind of you know gets fans excited, gets you know people who maybe don't follow the game a little more excited too. So, but uh, yeah, certainly interesting to see you know uh, Angel McCautry, you know, changing teams. Dewana Bonner, uh, you know, lots of great players, kind of in new places. You'll see what happens with Skyler Diggins Smith. Uh, what happens there? Doesn't seem like she'll be in Dallas. But yeah, lots of movements, a good thing for interest in the game. And hopefully, with the new CBA, you know, the coring rules will be lessened as, as the seasons go on. So that's something I think that'll be positive for, for the league. And how about Christy Tolliver? Yeah, heading back to LA, getting going back and uh, playing, playing this play. Hey, she won a title in LA, she won a title in Washington. <laughs> she can do it either place. I and, was going uh, yeah. to say. This is becoming a habit of her. She wins the title, <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm out. Do my job. <laughs> All right, I'm a head out. That's right. <laughs> Eden Prairie on the raw and Holloway with the finish. Missouri scored on the last possession for the Eagles, and this is what Eden Prairie needed: a couple of good ATO plays. There's still a lot of time. 4:15 to go. Page, another dish, Ooh. and Amaya battle. Drops it. Well, now I can say a dime. I was going to say dime prematurely. Yeah. It's almost like with the Splash Brothers. Well, there's Paige with another steal. Goodbye. We've got the Splash Sisters here at Hopkins, don't we? Aha, uh -huh, yes. They've been, they've been knocking down those shots tonight. Paige up to 17 points, and she's got, I think, five or six assists. I know you've been keeping track. Yeah, I think yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's five. And a couple, she should have two more, too. Her teammates haven't paid her off in a couple of those. But, yeah, she's well on her way to that uh, to that double-double or that triple-double tonight. We'll see. Well, and Paige, one of the most humble figures I've met, so even if her teammates can't finish the job, she's not going to get at them about it. And with the way Hopkins plays, you're going to get a lot of possession. So right. that means a lot of chances to make up a mistake. There's Neka Obeyizer going to Youngstown State. Obeyizer, get this, had a streak of 10 points or more in 12 straight games. She shot 500 or better in all of those games. That's pretty good. I mean, I'll see what happens here tonight. She kind of came into this game a little bit late. You know, didn't start and, you know, kind of came in halfway through this half. But, uh, yeah, let's see if, see if she can uh, keep, that, uh, keep that streak alive. And on a related note, Natalie Mazurik shot 800 or better in three games this season. So if Eden Prairie's shooting the ball well, as Obi Eiser had nowhere to go, Maya Naji, I think, with an emphatic swat. Paige Beckers out to Agara for three. Give the dime wow. to Naji. And Agara with her second triple. And continues to rain threes here. Mazurek with the answer. Yes. Right back at you. Stoppage in play with 241. The way Paige can facilitate move the floor, you never know what she's going to do. And so that last possession, I thought she was going to drive it and instead set it up eventually for Agara. And that instinct, the cohesion, just fun to watch. Maya Naji, no good there. Tough one there, kind of spun herself out of position. Unfortunately there, hits the side of the backboard with that one. And that oh. will be an offensive foul on Obi Iser. 218 left, 44 31 our score. Nice there, Gara to be moving her feet, you know, sliding the feet with her player rather than using her hands to defend there and gets the charge, takes the charge there. So Paige Becker, as we noted, up to 17 points. She had 20 points, 18 assists in the first meeting with Eden Prairie. 18 is her season high. Wow. Oh. Mia Holloway with the strip. Amaya Battle with the block. Morjani is there to recover it. Bursch will try the three. Battle with the rebound. And Amaya Battle goes coast to coast. And Hopkins, they've done just fine without her, but they'll be the first to tell you they're glad to have her back out on the floor. Obi Iser pump fakes the three. Bursch to Missouri. Fade away, no good. good contest there from Paige Beckers. Might even got a hand on it. 
And on the other end, Nunu Agara scoring a transition. Agara up to 10, and the Royals with a 17-point lead. Yeah, that uh, really, really, this whole game is about that press. That is, that is something else right there. Right, they scored most of their baskets, I would say, in transition. You know, getting those layups and stuff like that. So it's all due to that. All due to that press. It's like uh, Paige Becker's kind of gets to play free safety a little bit there. You know, she's not usually the one doing the trapping. She's kind of hiding in the weeds. You know, waiting right. for that steal, and then she gets the ball and she just makes great decisions. Whether that's creating for herself or for her teammates, so. Really impressive to you know see them execute that, that, that press. And that press, as you said, translates to a lot of quick buckets. And that's the way Hopkins likes to play. They played that way for years. So they love to run it. And like I said, I'm excited to see how they'll continue after Paige. But it's been a real honor to see what Paige has done. And whether or not this team is the best ever, I say it's tough to make out because another team could come along, even from Hopkins in a few years, and change that discussion. But what Paige has done to put a spotlight on Minnesota basketball, there was a lot of talent already with the number of D1 athletes the state sends out every year. But Paige has put Minnesota on a bigger pedestal. And you can see that with the crowd she gets, especially for road games. I went to the Hopkins Farmington game back in December, and it was a near sellout. Wow. Last year, Hopkins Wyzetta, two section and conference rivals. That game sold out for the girls. Wow. When they had boys, Very girls, impressive. double headers in conference, everyone stayed for the girls' game. Love to see it. And Paige has a massive following on social media as well with Instagram, Twitter, and, and because she's going to UConn, uh, the Boneyard, which is the UConn fan message board, they are excited to see number one suit up. And on cue, Speaking of which, right on time. number one gets all three of those, as Scott Van Pelt would say. <laughs> 51 points for Hopkins. It's not the first time they put up 50 and a half. Mazurek, oh Travel. yes. Right idea, took a few too many steps. Yeah, you know, it seemed like for the first half of this half, you know, Imperia is really hanging in there, really, you know, breaking that press and getting some easy back baskets. But the last few minutes have really kind of been an avalanche, and now they find themselves down 20 here to end the half. Maya Naji will shoot two. Avalanche sounds about right. <laughs> and that's not a knock on Eden Prairie or any other team they face, but... Hopkins can wear you down quickly with how quickly and how intense their defense is executed. A former player, Layla Chikolas, who's now playing D1 in Hampton, told me it, Hopkins practice sessions can run two to three hours long, especially on weekends. They work each other hard. The idea is work them hard in practice, put them through the bumps and the adversity there, make the games fun. Well, and build up that, you know, build that endurance, you know, for, you know, running a press is not easy, right? No. Uh, physically, you know, you know, when your lungs and stuff. So, yeah, them you, you all, gotta you got to be in great shape. Right. You've got to be conditioned for it. But that's the way the game is played at the higher levels in college and the pros. You don't see too many laid back styles of play. I mean, Brian Agler, still old school with the more deliberate style, but a lot of teams... They're going to push you and push you hard. Hopkins with a chance for an exclamation point. Paige Becker's elbow J. Foul. And if that's on the Eagles, that will send Hopkins to the line. It is. It goes against Bursch. One and one for Maya Naji. She's been a little shaky at the line tonight. But even Elena Deladon misses a couple. <laughs> Ooh, it's a very friendly bounce. <laughs> Goes off the back of the rim and flies over the backboard, but then nestles right back down to the rim. Maya Naji makes both free throws, and that brings the first half to an end. A fine display of athleticism for Hopkins, 54-31 the score, and Paige Beckers, this is her gym. 
We're just living in it. Wow, what a fun first half. Fun indeed, and we'll see what tricks Paige and the rest of the Hopkins Royals have up their sleeve, and we'll see if Eden Prairie can find a way to respond to that when we return. This is high school girls basketball. Hopkins leads Eden Prairie 54-31. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. That put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Mike Peden and Neil Olstad back with you at the Lindbergh Center where the Royals, the Hopkins Royals, have a 54-31 lead over the Eden Prairie Eagles. Unofficially, I've got Paige Beckers at 20 points, Nunu Agara with 10. Eden Prairie led by Natalie Mazurk with 13 and Nia Holloway with 9. But, Neil, you noted this. Around the midway point of the first half, that Hopkins press created some openings and the Royals have built a large lead as a result. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think Eden Prairie, you know, they, they, they've seen that they can beat that press. They, they've had some good opportunities down the floor. They've gotten in behind it. You know, I think they do have a number of good ball handlers, um, you know, who can kind of make things happen. Uh, you know, looking at uh, Morjani uh, and a few other players, you know, who can handle the ball. And that's what you really need against the press. You need to be able to keep the ball on the floor. Don't pick it up, right? <laughs> Don't get trapped. You know, that kind of thing. So I think Eden Prairie can do something against the press here. Maybe they can make this game interesting, make a run here. We'll see. And we've seen plenty of examples of Paige Beckers and her vision that have helped her lead the state in assists. Now, most of the time, Neil, you'll hear coaches tell players, don't think too hard, you know, don't think too far ahead. Paige tries to stay three steps ahead of, what, of what's actually going on, so she tries to anticipate where she needs to place the ball well before the play happens. You totally see that on the floor. She's got next level vision as far as the, yeah, uh, seeing what's going to happen before it happens, sort of seeing the play unfold, uh, you know, as a cutter is making their move or something like that. So, yeah, that, that, that definitely, see, you see that on the floor. <laughs> well, and two players she patterns her game after, Sue Bird and Kyrie Irving. Two good ones right there. Well, Paige considers Sue Bird one of the best point guards out there, and I'd be hard to argue against that. Amaya Battle missing the three. And Kyrie, because of his feel for the game, always knows what to do and has a counter for everything. Paige is a big Kyrie Irving fan. Destiny Burst scoring the layup for the Eagles, and they needed that. Paige, what a move. Baited Burst with the crossover, and an easy scamper to the hoop, jump ball. Eden Prairie with the arrow. Paige says her court vision was God's gift to her. If you wonder where she developed it. And I imagine a lot of practice as well. <laughs> right. But she has you the hone that gift. Right. The work ethic and the humility has all of that. And if you have an ego about you, you're going to have a hard time making it work. But Hopkins, they don't do that. Missouri for three, that's short. And we saw that recently with one of the top boys teams in the state, Minnehaha Academy. They had a runaway win over St. Peter. But the moment that was talked about most was the St. Peter athlete who had Down syndrome making a couple of baskets. And everyone, including Minnehaha, rushed the floor to greet him at the end of the game. Very cool. Lens in trouble. Hopkins, they can press in the half court set too. Holloway, the skip to Missouri. Three is short. Good ball movement there, though, to kind of avoid the traps and get a good look. 
Now looking ahead, Hopkins, they have a rematch with YZ on Valentine's Day. YZ without their top player, Jenna Johnson, she tore ACL after the first meeting in that series. Eden Prairie, they will play on Friday as well. They have Buffalo on Thursday. That should be a winnable game, but they get Stillwater on Friday. So two teams with red in their color scheme on Valentine's Day. Wow. It's almost like it was predetermined. You can't make it up. <laughs> I'm sure that's what the coaches were thinking. <laughs> Molly Lenz is fouled. She'll shoot two. Eden Prairie, they've had some success in the past. They had a couple of D1 athletes in Jackie Johnson and Shane Mullaney when Chris Carr, the former NBA player, was up here in Minnesota. Finished second in state in 2011, lost to Hopkins that year. Lenz, okay, it was a side out. Her nickname is Molly, what I can tell you that much though, and Lenz, her favorite food is ramen, noo ramen noodles. Holloway finds Lenz. Burst working off the screen, fires the three, can't hit it. Holloway with the rebound. Burst got back in bounds and scored. Again, second chance points there for, for Eden Prairie. That's, that's been their bread and butter today. Miss a shot, get that rebound, put it right back in. Anything that goes their way, they'll take. And I'll use this to point out, in case you're not familiar with the basketball rules, as Paige Beckers fires the three and Ooh, hits. Cash. The catch and shoot. If you run out of bounds in basketball, you can touch the ball if you go back inbounds. As Bursch hits the mid-range J. In football, you reestablish yourself. Right. Yeah. In football, you can't be the first to touch it if you go out of bounds. In basketball, right, as long as you get back in the field of play, you can go after it. Mike, this is a basketball crowd. What are you talking about football? What's that? I know it's a basketball <laughs> crowd, but in case anyone <laughs> yeah. is unfamiliar, because even I've learned things over the years. It's, it's, we're teaching out here, teaching the game. You're never too old to stop learning. <laughs> well, another example, not many know about the side out roll after a made or miss basket. Mm. I've seen that a couple of times. Actually, this happened when I was here for Hopkins Aquinas, where Aquinas was called for an inbound violation because they ran the floor. Uh. And Hopkins hadn't scored. Now Hopkins could run the floor if they wanted to. They won't because Missouri scored the layup. So another learning moment. Right. Basketball for dummies. But Paige is no dummy. <laughs> Paige with the dish to Woodson for the layup. 61-39. A steal by Battle. And Woodson scores again. Yeah, I know I wouldn't have to teach you anything about basketball. You probably know all the rules. <laughs> You've read the handbook up and down, I bet. Wow, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm an Page expert. sent to the floor. <laughs> Molly Lenz drains the three. I didn't see what happened, but Page got knocked to the floor there. Yeah, tried to take a charge or something, but yeah. Shot's starting to fall for the Eagles. They still trail by 21, so they need a few more things to go their way, but sometimes getting shots to go in is a good first step. Missouri, the long skip to Lenz. Another three, not that time. Holloway rips the rebound wow. away. That is. It's 1 2 right there. Right. That's 6 1, although I think that's 6 1 with the shoes on. Nia, maybe closer to 6 feet, 5 11, because I interviewed her after Rosemount, and we're about the same height, but still going up against Najee. But we said it in the first half, Nia. She primes herself for matchups like this, so she's not going to play scared against Hopkins. Lens to Morjani, long two, swish. And you're seeing Eden Prairie kind of feel like get a little more comfortable in their half court offense here, you know, moving the ball around, not rushing things, finding the open shooter. They've chipped this lead down to 19. Up, 
Contreras inbounds it to Beckers, sees a hole, and then kicks it out to Woodson. Well, it paid off there. That was a moment where I thought Paige was going to take it herself. Yeah, she definitely had the layup right there. But again, she's looking to pass. She's thinking teammates first, and hey, the teammate got fouled. So hey, they'll probably get the two anyway. I would be amused as Woodson goes to the line. I would be amused if Gino tries to encourage her to be a little more selfish at UConn because she can score. But she's a great passer, too. And yeah, she's very shifty. She can get right. past her man and, and get, get into the paint. And yeah, she's got some long arms, too. I think she could get that shot off. But sometimes, uh, you know, got to make everybody happy. Taylor Woodson averaging 15 points per game this year as a freshman, 7.8 last year as an eighth grader. Well, on the part of Paige, we joke about maybe being unselfish, but that just opens up so many more dimensions when you can create offense as much as you can score it. Yeah, and, you know, when your teammates know that about you, that you're looking for them, you know, they're going to run the lanes harder. They're going to play a little harder. They're going to, you know, just set some screens and roll, you know, those things. So it really is something that's contagious and really can help your teammates stay involved when you have such a singular talent on your team. Right. In a way, Paige makes all of her teammates better for that reason. That's what the Najee. great ones do. Najee will shoot two more. Not the best night at the line for Maya Najee, but her services haven't been needed as much tonight. She had 21 points and nine rebounds in the first meeting. And the fact that Maya, I'm not sure she'll get to 20 tonight, but you know, seven of the last eight games, 20 point performances. And if you go back even further, 10 in the last 15 as she gets the back end there. So Maya's consistency starting to show here as a sophomore. All the way with the long skip to number 34. That's Allison Miranda. Lens out to Morjani and she'll reset. Morjani, the skip to Mazurik. Oh, she had her. Mazurik couldn't put it in. Loose ball picked up by Agara. Hopkins, two on two. Agara shakes one defender and will go to the line for two. Nice hesitation dribble there. Just froze the defender and was able to get past there and get fouled. Go to the line for two free throws. The other thing that's interesting about Hopkins and their defense is they seem to be, you know, switching it up quite a bit. You know, you get the, you do get the, the press, but then sometimes it's a three-quarter court press, and sometimes that extends back to their zone that they'll play in their half-court defense too. So, you know, keeping really Eden Prairie on their toes by switching up the defense, not really get, letting them get comfortable with any one look. Agar averaging 7.7 .7 points per game. Saw some time off the bench last year. And... Did quite nicely in place of Amaya Battle in the starting five. Agara, another player to watch. That freshman class for Hopkins. Whoa, Beckers to battle. Oh, my goodness. Uh, behind the back uh, action there for Paige. Teammate couldn't pay it off. Double dribble. I saw a little hesitation there. Paige has had a couple of opportunities to add to her highlight reel, but... As we said before, with the way Hopkins plays, you get a lot of possession. So if you miss one, just focus on the next one. They got the ball already. <laughs> They're back at it. Oh boy. A little miscommunication on the part of Battle there, but Hopkins keeps possession. And Battle <laughs> recovers. Now that's got to feel good as a player. You make a mistake and then you make up for it with a basket. Redemption sweet. Three ball. Nothing doing for Miranda. Well, as we were saying before, with the number of possessions they play, next play. <laughs> or sometimes just next move yeah. in the case of that last possession. Beckers for three. 
Contreras with the rebound. There's another young gun for Hopkins. Yeah, the amount of youth they have on this team, Najee and Contreras in the sophomore class, Agara and Woodson in the freshman class, this team is going to be just as much fun to watch next year. As Agara gets the friendly bounce. Agara with 14 off the bench. Season eyes 19. Battle ran out of real estate there. 10.06 left in the second half. Beckers finds Contreras. Can't finish it. No, but another example of how Hopkins can use that press from inbound plays. I mean, we didn't see that steal coming. It just no. happened. But that's what Beckers does. Just tips the inbound pass, and yeah, down the floor we go. Beckers leading the state in assists, sixth in steals. She's not even in the top ten in scoring. In fact, her scoring average is down compared to last year. She's averaging 21 points per game. Now, we're talking about a first world problem here, but I'm sure if you were asked Paige, she'd be happy to take all those assists over points any day. Sure, also 20 and 0 goes a long way with that too. <laughs> 20 and 0 and 53 and 0 going right, back right. to the start of last season. I should say 52 and 0, Hopkins well on the way to 53 and 0. Woodson picks up her fourth foul, but not a concern here. I mean, these are UConn-like numbers Hopkins is putting up, but you know they're not invincible. We've seen a couple of times where they've been tested, but to go on a long streak like this, it's the longest Hopkins has ever had, you need a lot of breaks. It helps to have the talent, but you need some breaks to go your way, and Hopkins has made the most of them. I'm just glad you decided to make the trek out here to see Paige play. I know a lot of folks have wanted to see her. There were a couple of folks in the Lynx Prowlers fan group that were talking about Paige and that ESPN story, and one of them said, you should check out Paige in person while she's still here. <laughs> That's right, it's here in the high school gym right here in Hopkins. Just come on down. But yeah, there's a few more, a few more uh, metro area games here left in the season, and then I guess it'll be in the tournament time. Right, sections Hopefully and state. Hopefully you'll see her at the uh, Target oh, Center. No. Oh, <laughs> wasn't, wasn't paying attention there. Was that it held, one, at, <laughs> held at Target Center? The state? Uh, it, it got moved to Williams Arena Williams, a couple years yes. ago. Okay, so we'll see him at Williams. At Williams. Target Center was a little too costly, and as far as attendance goes, I feel Williams is a better fit because you didn't quite get the numbers that you do for the boys. That's not to say the woman can't get there as Jones scores. But even in the state tournament years for Hopkins, you might see that change this year since this is Paige's final year. She's going to UConn, and she's attracted a lot more attention. But the largest crowd I ever saw at state was the Central South rivalry back in 07, 08, the Taylor Hill years. Uh, yes. Where the lower bowl was filled up. Eden Prairie breaks the press, and Savannah Jones scores again. And Taylor Hill with the Dallas Wings, I believe, yes, now. Yes, D Dallas started at Washington. Although the way free agency is going, who knows? Who knows, yeah. <laughs> she might end up somewhere She'll else. She'll probably move teams as we were recording this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're all wondering, where is Skyler going to go? That's right. And we also, know uh, local product Rachel Bannum, I believe, is an unrestricted free agent. So her... Her uh, future is up in the air about Could, where she might right. play with uh, she decide Connecticut to come getting back? Bonner. So, yeah, who knows what where, where she might be. Could she decide to come back? I know she was a big fan of Waylon and company. And you the know Golfers. the Lynx are willing to bring in the hometown uh, you know, players. So, yeah, I think that could uh, be something you see. It worked out once. <laughs> it worked out once. Let's do it all again. It worked out. Yeah, the local fans are big, big Bantam fans. Every time Bantam comes to town, uh, even the Lynx fans are cheering her on. So, yeah. I think that would go over well, and you know, I think that's something you know the Lynx are looking for this offseason. They need space for Sylvia Fowles down there, and 
you know, that's something that Bantam can definitely do, you know, F fill it up from the outside. And she is rooted here, as you know, part mm. of the coaching staff at Roseville High School, coaches the girls' team. Maya Naji scoring for the Royals, so her double-digit streak will continue. Well, you know how it goes. The hometown products, they leave for a little while, then they come back, and I feel there's a greater sense of appreciation when they return. That's right. Back home. As Beckers finds Agara for the layup. You see Hopkins now kind of laying back on that on that press, sort of a mercy mercy rule situation here. They're up 25 plus and you know 26 points here. And, right. You we're, know they don't want to rub it in. We're not at running time yet, but you're right, Hopkins. They're not going to risk anything silly unless the games unless even Price Curry see works Becker's in still deficit. in, frankly. But maybe well, that's how they roll. Hopkins, they play a seven-player rotation for the most part. And as you said, just a few chances left to see Paige in action. And then maybe a Nationals if Hopkins can complete that undefeated run. Wow. You are mentioning Bantam earlier as Najee goes to the line. Bantam and Whalen, not only were they gophers, but also not necessarily heralded products the way Paige is. Mm, yeah. Uh, Waylon was third team all Metro the year she graduated from Hutchinson High School in 2000. Susan King won Miss Basketball that year. And Rachel Bantam, she did win Miss Basketball in Minnesota, so it wasn't like she was unknown, but I don't think anyone expected her to blossom into the score she became at Minnesota for the Gophers. No, no slam magazine for, for Bantam. No, no slam. Well, no, yeah. none for Waylon either. Yeah, yeah. The hype has uh, risen up, which is a good thing, right? I, mean, I think that shows kind of how far and women's Mia basketball's Coffey, right. come. Mia Coffey, for all the great things she did, Slam didn't put her on the cover, no. and she was a tremendous athlete. Part of a long line of them with Amir now playing in the NBA, her older sister Sydney playing D1 at Marist. Wow, now family of Hoopers. The, they were. Well, and their father was Richard Coffey, if you remember him. Ah, yes. From the Gophers. Paige. Doesn't quite have that lineage as far as basketball talent goes, at least on a first name basis, but. It's gotta start somewhere. Exactly. Start with her and her family. <laughs> Every story has a beginning. Every saga has a beginning. I think that was the tagline from episode one. Okay. From Star Wars. <laughs> nice. Every saga. But you're right. Every story, every seed, someone's gotta plant it. And what Paige is doing is just remarkable. Holloway, turn around, no good. The fadeaway, I know Kobe and MJ make it look effortless when they're playing careers as a guard scores the layup. The fadeaway is a really tough shot to make. And Hopkins, like you said, not pressing as much as they once did, but still getting those fast yeah, break that plays. That half-court defense is <laughs> still on fire out here. They're running all over, covering crazy ground, switching. Yeah, Hopkins' defense is very impressive. And that's what makes them so scary. Yes, they love the full-court press, but their half-court press just as potent. There's wow. another dime for Beckers. Great entry pass there, lob over the top there. Beckers, another assist. I would guess she's around 10 at this point. Close to it. I guess she should have a lot more. Maybe maybe it's a common occurrence. It seems like there's a lot of layups. <laughs> just rimmed out, just barely rimmed hey, out here tonight. Would you play as with the speed that Hopkins does as Paige goes to the bench? So we might have seen the last of her. You're not going to <laughs> score in every possession. But right, right. again, battle of attrition. Use defense as your offense. I'm not sure how I wanted to phrase that, but for Hopkins, I think their defense, the way they approach it is to run it on offense and just oh, totally. outrun whoever they're playing. 
Well, and then they score, uh, you know, off that defense in transition, and then, uh, you know, they get layup, and then all of a sudden, hey, they're right back on it. The press is back. You exactly. Know? So it kind of compounds on itself there. Right. It can just get so hard for the opposition. And there, are some, teams, going. there are some teams that still play the old school style, the four corners, the stall game. Rosemount comes to mind there. But Hopkins, they want to up the number of possessions. Make you play fast. It works for them. Six state titles since 2006 and several appearances in the championship round beyond that. Remember, they lost three in a row between state titles in 2015 and 2019, which sounds like a first war problem, but that motivated the Hopkins group last year. And up until last year, you probably read the stories of how Page, as Amaya Battle gets an acrobatic save there, and Woodson will finish the play. You probably read how Paige got flack for not having a state title despite having USA gold medals in junior competition. Savannah Jones scoring for the Eagles. Paige took that off her shoulders yeah. last year, and this Hopkins team, I'd say they're having fun. So, you know, looking forward, this Hopkins team obviously very, very good. Who would you say is like their, their like, you know, who are they going to see? Who, who are some of their tough, tougher teams, tougher, you know, you know, tougher competition that might, might actually give them a run for their money here as it gets closer to state title time. Well, a date you'll want to check out is February 18th. CCX will have live coverage of that game. St. Michael Albertville, the first meeting here at the Lindbergh Center. Hopkins won 88-80, but it was neck and neck. Wow. STMA got out to a 10-point lead using the three ball. And if it wasn't for a couple of unforced errors late, STMA would have had a good chance of winning it. YZ will see how they respond without Jenna Johnson. But I would say STMA would be their toughest competition should they get to state. They're in separate sections. Okay. Yeah. And the Knights, they haven't been to state in a couple of years. And that will be the fifth foul on Woodson. 13 points by our count, so that's what she'll finish with. But Taylor Woodson, you can live with fouling out when you've got a 31-point lead. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, other teams to keep an eye out for, Stillwater, not quite as potent as a year ago without Sarah Scalia. The two were supposed to meet in mid-January. That didn't happen because of bad weather. But Stillwater, they've got some sharpshooters. That could be another team. And Park Center, they played Hopkins and couldn't hang with them, but they have an explosive score in Adalia McKenzie. McKenzie went off for 40 points Ooh. when Hopkins and Park Center met back in wow. December. The Royals won that one as they were able to pull away late in the first half, but if Adalia McKenzie, if she can get to state and find a groove, oh, Maya Battle making her presence known, reminding everyone that she can still play. But those are a couple of teams who could take nice. on Hopkins, and the coaches would tell you even some teams not in the conversation could make a run. Whoever can break that press. <laughs> break the press. That's who I give it to. Right. It's break the press, and again, no unforced errors. Yeah. You know, so you don't want to have the sloppy pass in the backcourt or you know the lazy pass or anything like that. So it takes a lot, but it can be done. KK Adams, we haven't heard from her at all tonight. She hasn't scored, missed the three there, but hasn't needed to. Battle's been impressive tonight, too. She's she's got it, and this is turning into yeah, it's very all star loose game basketball, at this point. right? Yeah. This is turning into an all star type of game here in these last couple of minutes. Right, the defense is eased up. Stat padding time, as Al Michaels would call it. Huh. Well, Eaton Prairie knew Hopkins would be tough. They usually are, but. For Eden Prairie, an up-and-coming team. Minnetonka is another one. You know, sometimes you've got to get your butts kicked to build your way up. You know, Hopkins, there was a time when they weren't the powerhouse that they are. UConn, until Gino Oriema came in there. Tennessee, similar situation. Yeah, you got to start somewhere, and you got to know sort of where the bar is, you know. So sometimes, yeah, even within a season, you know, I'm sure... These teams have, you know, these teams have matched up before, but you sort of see where that bar is. You see where the level is you need to reach, 
and maybe you learn some things here in this game about you know how to break that press or what it takes to beat a team like this and you can take it forward with you into the next matchup. And conversely, as Gino Oriema put it so succinctly, you're allowed to lose a game once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. You know, Hopkins, again, they lost the championship round three years in a row. A lot of teams would kill to just have that opportunity, but you know, Paige had to go through her own adversity and the rest of this team before it finally paid off. And I know Dlela was relieved and proud to finally go out as a champion after coming so close. All three of those games, they had a chance to win it, just couldn't close out. But it goes back to what I said, you have to lose once in a while. That's right, you gotta start somewhere. Savannah Jones. Savannah Jones, she's having a nice game. Now, as you said, the press is backed off, but she's up to 13 off the bench. And we've got some younger faces in there for the Royals. Let's name them for you. That's number two, Kelly Boyle, the 5'5 freshman. And getting blocked there, that's number 12, Alicia Bates. Alicia, the younger sister of Ashley Bates, as number 11 for the Eagles, Ashley Fritz scores. Ashley Bates was part of that senior group that included Nia Holly, Big South Player of the Year last year at Hampton University. Now, maybe not as recognizable as Paige, but Ashley Bates, another fine product to come out of Hopkins. The list goes on and on. Right. <laughs> And I think that's the biggest thing that I would inform viewers of. I know a lot of folks are paying attention because of what Paige has done, but Hopkins has a lot of history, and it would benefit you if you're not familiar with it to look some of that up because they put out a lot of talent and a lot of amazing citizens too. Yeah, it's been cool to be here today and, and be able to learn a lot about, you know, about this about this game and you know about the women's you know high school league and and also about hopkins and yeah all, all, all this winning and all this greatness and yeah it's uh it's you know it's, sometimes it takes something like you know Paige becker's you know being here for even someone like me who you know knows the game very well to come and check out the game and stuff so you know i think it's really cool and hopefully there's others too who are watching some even if it's their first women, you know, high school women's basketball game ever it's great you know, just get you in the door and watch it a little bit and it's, it's really fun well, I can attest to it. I wrote a column a few years ago when Waylon announced her retirement. She was the reason I got into women's basketball there during go. the Final Four run. Well, yeah, and, uh, you know, Mike, I want to say thanks for having me on the broadcast here. You know, kind of came in late. You needed some help. And uh, we're, yeah, we're, speaking we, of we assists, go way back. We, yes. yeah, we go way back. So we're old friends. And uh, it's fun to be on the mic, catch up with you uh, here at the game. It's been, it's been cool. Well, and if you want to uh, hear more of Neil on the mic, check out that Lynx Dynasty Link's podcast. Dynasty. I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about in the first installment this year. Yes, right. And check out his columns on Candace Hoopus as the Lynx, you know, they'll have another busy season. They've got another solid first-round draft pick if they decide to hang on to it. That's right. With the way free agency is going. Yeah, number six overall, but, so we'll see who they pick you know, up. If we've seen the last of Maya Moore, who knows? It looks like we're seeing the next generation, <laughs> the next wave That's in right. Nafisha Collier. We'll see if Jessica Shepard can bounce back from the ACL injury. But you saw kind of a glimpse of the future last year with the Minnesota Lynx. Yeah, a little bit younger team. And, yeah, they're going to get younger again this year. And, uh, yeah, well, they're not done in free agency. So we'll see We'll see what happens there. But maybe be, Skyler will join them. There you go. She's been rumored. Let's see. Maybe <laughs> tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> so Hopkins... We'll pick up win number 21 and win number 53 in a row, 88-64. Neil, the second half, not a lot of movement, but another fine display from Hopkins. And like you said, what Paige is doing to introduce a lot of us to the women's game, much like Waylon did for me years ago. So many folks are going to look to Paige as an inspiration because of what she's doing. And tonight was just another example. So cool, so inspiring, really fun to see such a, you know, an amazing young player, really, just like light things up on the floor here. Clearly the best player on the floor, really fun to see. And yeah, Hopkins continues, they're at 21-0 now 21 -0. on this season as they continue the quest to, to defend that title. We'll see how things go here to end out the season for them. They took another big step tonight, 88-64 the final. We'll come back for a post-game interview with some Hopkins players. This is High School Girls Basketball. 
Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. That's put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Joining me are Amaya Battle and Paige Beckers. And uh, Paige, you just finished an autograph session. I know you were honored for the McDonald's All-American selection that you got. And since the last time we were here, you became the first high school female to be featured on Slam. Seems like every time I cover you, there's a new accolade. I don't know if there's any room left on that list, but to get that recognition, what does that mean for you to make a piece of history for Slam? Uh, it means everything just to be able to be the first high school girl on the magazine cover. Uh, I'm, I'm etched in history and I just want to keep going and keep pushing and never get complacent or think I'm entitled to anything because I made the cover. So I try not to get too big headed about it, but definitely thankful for sure. Just to cover, right? Yeah, just to cover. <laughs> just to cover. But something you did really well tonight was your defensive coverage against Eden Prairie. It was close in the first half and then that press translated to a lot of fast break plays. So when did you sense the tide was turning in your favor? Uh, definitely we went on a run before the second half. It was pretty close at the beginning of the game and then we just locked in on defense and we started turning them over and then we got easy fast break uh, points. So it, it definitely helped us when we pick it up on the defensive end. And what would you make of the reception you had after the game, having you know, dozens of fans take photos, ask for autographs? And I'm guessing you know, that's something maybe you, you don't go into thinking about when you're doing a game, but to get that kind of recognition from the community, what does that mean for you? That's awesome. It's pretty much why I play the game, just to be a great, mo great role model and a great inspiration for younger kids. And I just want to keep doing that and keep being somebody uh, people can look up to. And then... As far as performance goes, 25 points. We'll see how many assists you got. I thought you got close to 10, even if Amaya cost you one there. <laughs> uh, but there were a couple of times where I thought you were going to take it, but you kind of fooled your opponents into thinking you were going to go for a drive, take a shot, and instead you dished to Amaya or another teammate. Uh, how do you develop that instinct to uh, get opponents to buy the fake like that? Uh, I think that's just like... Who I am. It's uh, definitely the main part of my game is making my teammates better. I know I can get my shot off at any time, but I just want to get my teammates involved and I take pride in my assists, so that's just what I'm focused on. Now, Amaya, even if you missed a layup uh, that caused Paige an assist, it, you've been playing for a couple of weeks now, and I saw even Ellen Weesey, the Eden Prairie parents and fans, were happy to see you back. How exciting was it for you to return to the floor, and what does it mean to be back out there getting layups again? Um, it was like really exciting. I didn't when she told me I was cleared. I made a repeat because I didn't believe her, and then like just being out there with my teammates, it's really fun just to be back and playing. What would you make of the fast break play from Hopkins? You know, you're a freshman, but you've been here for a while, and you know this group, a lot of experience, and to have the instinct that you've developed at such an early age. How did you find that? Um, I think like over the years and like the people before me like P and like our other point guard like Dee Dee, like I just like learned from them and got instincts and all that, yeah. 53 straight wins now for the Royals. I'm guessing you don't think too much about that as the season moves along, but what does it mean to be part of a history defining streak here? Um, it means a lot. I know like everybody's watching us and we all have a target because everybody wants to take us down and we just got to take it game by game and not lose the streak. Well, I don't want to take you down because you would uh, take me out to or you would school me on the floor. <laughs> I might have a chance at Mario Kart. I heard Paige, you're a pretty good player between you and Azzy. Uh, I've heard there's some discrepancy over who the better one is. No, I'm definitely better. I'm basically the goat at Mario Kart, so whoever wants to smoke, they can catch it anytime. I'd be willing to take on that challenge. <laughs> That's fine. Anybody. We're playing Mario Kart. <laughs> okay. I'm Mario Kart, yes, not basketball, because no, you don't need to prove yourself to me there. Uh, you want to say hi to anybody? Hi, Mom. Yeah. Uh, friends, family, my mom, my little sister, Ryan and Lauren. 
Well, you heard it here first. If you think you can take on Paige Beckers at Mario Kart, uh, hit her up and we'll see if you've got it. But uh, you definitely have got it on the basketball court a mile. It was a lot of fun to see you out there again, and I hope you can stay healthy and play an integral role in state. And Paige, uh, congrats again on the slam cover and getting the recognition for the All-Star All-American game. And uh, have fun as the season moves along. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Paige Becker's in a Maya battle, and that wraps up our coverage here from the Lindbergh Center. For the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching.